Jared and I have a 2002 Honda S2000. Had it since brand new and I've been driving it on the street and racing it ever since. So I'm a mechanical engineer and I do product design. So I have a consulting firm called Sector One Design and do basically mechanical design for multiple industries, mostly medical device, um, some automotive, some sports equipment kind of stuff. Had always dreamed of the S2000 uh, and an NSX, those are kind of my dream cars. I was a super Honda nut. While I was in college, I worked as a Honda technician in the summers. Um, and I was always just really impressed with the engineering and kind of the quality and the simplicity and just kind of how high tech things were. Like you look at a run of the mill beater Civic cylinder head and it's like 1980s Formula One kind of technology. And, and you know, I've got a bunch of friends that are huge in the Porsches and they're always saying like, oh man, just look at the jewelry of the Porsche engine and you take it apart and it's like, yeah, have you looked at a Honda? Like surprisingly, even though they mass produce them and stuff, they're really well engineered. Always been into bikes my whole life and as soon as I graduated, you know, I looked at going into the automotive industry and I wasn't super interested in living in Detroit. Contacted several different uh, companies and ended up interviewing with Cannondale. The industry, the motorcycle, off-road motorcycle industry, they sold something like 100 ATVs to every one motorcycle. Um, and so we basically said, well, we've got this super killer, you know, four-stroke, fuel-injected, dry-sumped engine. Let's, let's build an ATV. Uh, when I bought the S2000, one of the very first things I did was the suspension. When I was working for the ATV project, I worked a bunch with the Owens engineers. Basically taught me how to take them all apart and revalve, and and I learned a lot about you know how valving affects the performance. And so I ended up with a bunch of used parts. We had piles of dampers and springs and everything else. And so I took those same dampers and machined kind of custom bottom mounts and custom top mounts, completely revalved them. On the front side, the length in the body, the rears were pretty much perfect. These guys with four or 500 horsepower would just blow away from me on the straights and we'd get to the corner and I would catch them by the first corner and just be stuck behind them through all the corners and then as soon as I'm ready to pass, it's a straightaway and they're gone again. And so it was just this exercise in frustration. And so I decided to do a supercharger. At the time, there were a couple supercharger kits on the market, but I didn't really like the kit that was available and I didn't like where it was mounted. And so I bought the Rotrex compressor and fabricated my own kit. So basically built a bracket so the supercharger fits right where the original AC compressor was. It is slightly detuned on the top end. It's about 345 horsepower at the rear wheels. <laughs> I didn't even know uh, about God Arm. I looked into it and of course I was familiar with Initial D so I looked into it and watched the episode. It was about kind of this very methodical driver driving an S2000 kind of in the same way that I do. I was surprised when there was a comment about me driving one-handed because I was like, oh wow, I thought I was pretty good about keeping both hands on the wheel.
some reason, this car, it seems I mean, it's kind of cliche to say that it's more than the sum of its parts, but you look at the specs on paper, not crazy light. Aero is pretty poor, the drag is high. It doesn't have that much power, doesn't have that much brakes, doesn't have that much tire, but you go race an Exige on the track. I've never seen an Exige even close to the speeds that this thing will run. Um, and they're great cars, the dynamics are really fun, but I just haven't found anything that really ticks all the right boxes um, that I can afford. 